President Theodore Roosevelt, citing the greatest good for the greatest number, made Owens Valley off-limits to further development by surrounding it with a national forest. It suddenly became part of the Inyo National Forest, the only national forest in America with hardly any trees. The only trees were the orchard trees that were being irrigated and were about to die. With the law and the president on his side, Mulholland set out in 1905 to build his aqueduct across the desert. It was a great drama. It was a great epic drama, the building of that aqueduct. You had mule teams and you had men. And they were working in desert heats, arid conditions. Water was a problem. Ironically enough, here in this giant water project, they had, they had to worry about adequate water for the, the working stock and the men. It can be almost freezing at, at night and then 110 degrees in the daytime, practically. Mahal was there all the time. Chief Engineer Mulholland had no formal training in civil engineering. He had, in fact, never graduated from grade school. The automobile had barely been invented. Clipper ships were still sailing the seas. And this was an engineering project the likes of which the world had really never seen before. Mulholland ordered a 12-foot steel pipe forged in Germany and shipped around the Horn. A hundred thousand men and women worked on the aqueduct, but never more than a few thousand at a time because the exhausting and dangerous work kept turnover so high. They had been farmhands, cowboys, and hard rock miners, but now they were city employees, civil servants like the chief himself. With no air conditioning, no refrigeration, no hard hats, in 110 degree heat, they crossed the Mojave in five years with a pipe big enough to hold a locomotive. This was, uh, you know, an aqueduct that would have reached all the way across Massachusetts and then almost all the way back through a desert with mountains. What they were really building was, was the world's longest garden hose. Surveyors said they could build the aqueduct simply by following the trail of whiskey bottles Mulholland and Eaton had thrown off the back of their buckboard in 1904. In the end, the chief and his lieutenants finished the job under budget and ahead of schedule. William Mulholland built his original aqueduct so well that to this day it still carries the Owens River to the people of Los Angeles. The phrase, Grandpa's aqueduct, were among my first words. The day of the dedication of the aqueduct was, without a doubt, the high point of my grandfather's life. A crowd of 30 to 40,000 Los Angelinos had gathered at the base of the spillway. There was a formal program but once the water spilled down the cascade, the formal program was abandoned because thousands of people rushed with their tin cups to drink the water. When the water came cascading down there, Mulholland, who, who was really exhausted at the time, gave what I think is the most concise education speech in history. He unfurled an American flag, he turned to the water, and he said, there it is. Take it. Based on Mulholland's predictions, it was four times more water than Los Angeles could use. Oh, so slow from Oso Parkway. If you're on the San Diego South and Magnolia, that accident cleared to the right shoulder. We're clear back to the Westminster Mall with bumper to bumper through the beach cities. And if you're going to be making your way on the 91 freeway... That moment actually has to be seen not just in terms of human history, however brief human history is. It has to be seen in terms of geological time. Here you have for the eons an environment 
now being profoundly changed by the changing course of that river. And that water, in effect, created contemporary Los Angeles. It's your earthquake damage repair and remodeling headquarters. This weekend, fly Sun Trips to Honolulu for only $199 plus tax round trip. Sun Trips, your pipeline to paradise. With their watch traffic out there. One of the big banquets in the city celebrating this great event. He made a speech and made the very interesting observation. He said, we're doomed to success. Might be a motto for the city, don't you think? When water came after 1913, it prepared for an absolute golden age of building and construction plans that lasted through the 20s and through the 30s. At one point in the early 20s, there were some 67 lumber ships at the San Pedro Harbor lined up just waiting to get the, the wood off so they could keep the construction going. You also had the beginnings of, of the great Hollywood figures uh, coming out, D.W. Griffith, uh, Cecil B. DeMille, coming just a few months after the water. At nowhere, uh, as you move to Los Angeles, were you not in the presence of lawns, hedges, palm trees, Great palm trees which sway above Los Angeles now like nodding giraffes are taken as the signature of the city. Palm trees were not native to the region. They were planted by the hundreds and the hundreds in this era. Here you had a, a semi-arid region where coyotes roamed, where tumbleweed was blown by the wind, which in a very short time was turned into arguably the most exquisite invented garden in history. Now, if you link that with the adjacent citrus groves, uh, which were still in full bloom in the teens and the 20s, I wasn't there, but it must have been wonderful. You had a general sensibility at that time of turning the desert into an Eden. Charlie Chaplin and Aldous Huxley came from England, William Faulkner from Mississippi, Frank Lloyd Wright from Wisconsin, Everyone came from everywhere. L.A. was suddenly growing 11 times faster than New York, faster even than Calcutta. A million people by 1922, of whom 31,000 were licensed real estate agents. Now, over Mulholland's objections, Los Angeles began annexing 52 surrounding communities. Soon, the city limits would cover 400 square miles, more than any city in America. There'll be a lot of irate citizens when they find out that they're paying for water that they're not going to get. Oh, that's all taken care of. See, Mr. Gibbs, either you bring the water to L.A. or you bring L.A. to the water. What he simply meant was that, um... You uh, uh, would bring the water to where the, you wanted to bring it, and call that place L.A. <laughs> and 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 therefore, you could get Los Angeles taxpayers to pay uh, what, in effect, were a cabal of real estate speculators uh, to have the city pay millions of dollars for them to pump water down to land that was not in fact part of the city and then cause them to vote that as part of the city and thereby increase the value of that land which they had purchased and held a thousand fold. So they were causing uh, one city in effect to pay for them to develop another city by and then say, well, it's really the same city. <laughs> 